Hi, good morning, everybody. This is the Human Colony Saturday morning webinar. Today is December 3rd already, 2016. And we are um, featuring today our lovely channeler, Jim Charles, is with us again. Hi, good morning, Jim. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is this is going to be wonderful this morning, and we have a lot of people with us, so I will just take a second here to introduce everybody in the room, and people will come and go. We have Angie, Astrid, Brian, Carolina, Christine, David, Jim, Khan, Kina, Mark, Max. I think Max might have had to leave, but his biolocator avatar is still there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Michelle, Peter, Sam, Shaheen, Sheer, Stephanie, Will, and myself, uh, Bree. So we have um, a few requests this morning. I think people will, were already starting maybe to type in some requests. Um, before we get to requests, I'll just announce a few quick things for Human Colony. Please visit our website, humancolony.org to get updates, events. We have our scheduled events coming up with the calendar. Um, we have a little intro section that describes what Human Colony is and what we're about and what we do. Check that out, especially if you are telling other people about Human Colony and you want an easy way to explain to them because this is so much information. Sometimes it's nice to have a little snippet. Um, Check out our videos, check out our YouTube. We have two YouTube accounts. This is the Human Colony 2 account that we do the webinars on. We copy them over to the Human Colony TV YouTube. There are hundreds of videos out there. Please check them out. Um, we are asking if anyone would be willing to give us any sort of donations for keeping what we have going, keeping our website running, keeping everything that we're doing up and running, please donate us. You can find our donate link um, on our humancolony.org website. I think it's humancolony.org slash donate. Um, and also, if anyone wants to transcribe videos for us in English or any other language, please let us know. There are so many blessings and so much galactic poetry and um, channelings and information that we do need written down because it is important to have that. So if you want to help us transcribe, please visit our website. Please contact us and let us know. We would greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, with that said, next Saturday webinar, we are still pending for a channeler. Um, and so other upcoming events, does anyone have any events that they would like to mention for anything they're doing? Well, no. I'd like to I'd like to mention that the, um, yep. the channel panel DVD and audio has just got came out. So if you're interested in that, go to uh, the uh, Rob Gothier site. I forget the name of it. It's etwhisperer.com. Yeah, etwhisperer.com <laughs> or Enlightenment Evolution Radio. Yes, so. awesome. Thank you, Jim. Actually, it's etwhisper.com slash channel dash panel. It is everything that Jim just said. You can um, buy the audio and the video, and it is it looks so incredibly amazing. I can't wait to see you, Jim. Jim was just featured um, in this year's channel panel. So um, it's incredible to have Jim a part of that. They're, it's so cool that all these people are opening up to being channelers. Everybody has the ability to be a channeler. It's just if that's your highest joy. So um, check it out. There's such amazing information that's coming out all over the place. So thank you, Jim, for that. That's perfect. Um, other than that, I think uh, we do have a few requests. Um, that people were lining up. If there are requests, please comment them in the in the section here. Oh, that reminds me. Today I'm going to be watching the YouTube live chat for questions, and I'm going to be obviously taking questions here in the room. Uh, we're going to have a queue going, but um, we do need to keep the questions a little bit general in terms of it's 
we can't really be answering questions like what your personal percentage of DNA is or um, stuff like that just for a huge webinar like this, but please book private sessions with our channelers, either with Jim or with anyone else we have here or anyone else you see online who you truly resonate with. Book private sessions with them. Um, their, their prices are not bad and sometimes you can work things out if you really need the information. It's just what's really important is to um, have a, a place you can go where you feel comfortable with that. Again, this is live TV, so um, let's try to keep the questions a little bit less in terms of like personal DNA percentages, which change, by the way, I will mention. Um, so other than that, we have some requests for, let's see, I know um, I would like to request John Lennon and um, I would also like to request Buddha. Um, are there any other requests that are lined up here? Anybody else? Elijah. Um, Elijah. Hi, this is Carolina. Um, so I think I made contact with the Elephant co Collective. And so Elephant. Elephant Collective. Okay, yes. I've never heard of that. Yes. Okay. And so maybe if they want to come and, and if they have if they have a message for us, please. Okay. And the uh, and the dragons, if possible. Whoever wants to come. Oh, okay. wonderful. Yes, and you reminded me, Carolina, also um, would like to also request if they wish to pop in the Angels of Sagittarius. Apparently, this has been a huge energy with the new moon in Sagittarius and the sun in Sagittarius just a few days ago. And I know that's that's that energy is still in the air. Um, so also, oh, even there's, like specific, there's specific angels for Sagittarius. I didn't know there were, but I guess there were. Me and Wendy were talking about it, and she said they were just like, there was so much energy coming from them. Um, also, any Alpha Centaurians or any sort of, let's, I mean, hey, we have Sagittarius energy everywhere. We have all, a lot of our friends, it was just Carolina's birthday. It was just Khan's uh, birthdays in a few days. I mean, there's so many Sagittarians, so wanted to throw that out there, too, if anyone wants to pop Ooh. in with that energy. Uh, yes, we have a request from Merlin. I'm sorry. A request Michelle. for Merlin? Yep. Okay. We have uh, Merlin. We have Albert Einstein. We have. Um, <coughs> yeah, we do. We have a request for Donald Duck. Now, I have seen channelings of Mickey Mouse, and you can go and watch those if you want to watch those. Um, well, hey, if, if Donald Duck consciousness wants to pop in, who am I? Who could they, say I, that's another person doing the animation on that. So whoever was in charge of Donald Duck. <laughs> Mel <laughs> Blank, I think, was. Okay. It might have been Mel Blank. I'm not sure. So. We have a request for Grindel, lots for Elijah. Um, wonderful. So we had some requests come in. Super, super awesome. Oh, um, Cher was asking what I meant about a change in the DNA. I just meant like, depend. I, I don't know the details. I know that as we go through life, things kind of change. It depends on what we're, um, what we're around in our environment. It depends on things like vaccines. It depends on um, if you get DNA infusions, like which happens here in this group. Um, it also depends on who you ask, like who, who you're talking to has a different understanding of DNA than we do, and I don't even it right, Jim. I mean, do you want to comment on true. that at all? Um, yeah, I have a comment on that. If you Gurk Vicknear has one way of doing it that they can tell you what your DNA's percentages are. However, uh, they have a certain group of aliens within their group that they can check on and look specifically for. Now, if you you're talking to Lakash or somebody outside of Group Kripnir, they might use different measurements to tell you what the, your DNAs are and what percentages there are there because they use a different way to look at it. And they may be able to see a greater or a lesser amount of the DNA, or they may look for pure DNA, whereas some species look for the uh, uh, accumulative DNA with that in it. So. It's all kinds of information. It's it's actually sort of important to know 
your hybridization DNA, but in other ways, it's it really doesn't mean anything. You're not going to be able to do much about it unless you add to your DNA. So, um, and they tell you what the different DNAs do for you and how it can help you individually. Each person is helped slightly differently, but there is a general uh, understanding what DNA can do for mankind in, in general. But sometimes they will give you more specifics if you're asking for a particular DNA. They may add things or, or say, or take away things depending on your exact body makeup, uh, et cetera. So, but it is interesting. I love it. Yeah, it really is. It's fascinating, especially um, the fact that DNA is technically, um, a day was explaining this to, to me the other day, and I feel like it's important, so I'm going to mention it. Apparently, there's like a factor of, it's like taking, it's information. So it's like information from past lives, kind of. Right, Jim? It's like... Well, like yes, there links. can be some of that, yes. Um, there are links to past lives with the DNA, yes. But uh, that's more of an oversoul thing. Okay. When you're born into a physical life or a dimension, you uh, sometimes get the DNA of your parents or your family tree in that, in that way. But you can bring along from your past life some DNA or some thoughts or some... Uh, portions of your last uh, life in the sense that perhaps you were from a different dimension and you might bring a lightness to your DNA or a disconnect from third dimension or whatever but it it can have an effect but it might not show up definitely in your DNA but it'll show up in your karma so um, as you get older so it's it could show up in your DNA as well so it's amazing the different things that can happen as uh, you realize how these different things move through eternity. So it's interesting. Right, right, because we are eternal beings. So, um, yeah, it's fascinating. So we can go more into that later, I'm sure. Um, there's tons of information, guys. If you don't know, please check out Human Colony TV YouTube. Search for DNA. There's like so much out there on the infusions and everything you know this is it's a real deal you know it's up to us we're we're creating our reality so we can say hmm i think i want this now instead but make sure you know that's truly mm -hmm. what you want if it's approved yeah um Very awesome good. we had a few more requests then we can move to blessings we had a request for sasquatch we had a request for or, and sasquatch energy has been really strong recently i know at least for myself it's I don't even know. I think they're starting to say, hey, guys. Hey, hello. Hi. We're here. <laughs> well, what happened is I, I can I can explain oh, that. Please. They were off planet for a while, and oh. now they're back on. So um, their energies are, are getting stronger again. They just returned because, remember, the fourth dimensional energy anomaly uh, shot some people away from the planet, and, and they were one that left just uh, to test the waters first to make sure that they were okay and then they they have now returned. So just recently with a big they have returned a, in a, a large number actually. Wow, that's fascinating. I had no idea. So um yeah, they had left for a little while for several months yeah. and now they are back. That makes so sense. That's why you're feeling their energy again. Interesting. Cool. That's so cool. We have um also request for oh um elijah as we had mentioned and um i can tell you that elijah will will come oh wonderful today That's good to hear oh and finally a request for hybrid children khan was kind of joking about the 2.1 year old on um maya who had popped in that one day on the webinar so any young hybrid children such an there are many. <laughs> it's, I know. I, I, it's such an experience for us to interact. So we welcome that yes. as well. Okay, wonderful. Then let's do some blessings. I know Angela said she had a blessing to do first. Yeah, she's right here. She's already wonderful. Um. So when? All right. 
Thank you everybody for being here and um, have a wonderful webinar. And I hope you learn lots. And we're sending Michelle healing energy today and anybody else out there who needs healing energy, just ask for it and it will come to you because that's our intent to send it out to the people listening who need it, all right? And that's all you need to intend. You don't have to say what their name is or anything. You just uh, say, I need the energy and it will come to you, all right? And time is not a factor. It is not. Go ahead. Hi, Angie. Good morning. <laughs> Atua we are watching your lives and they are moving through darkness and light they are moving up mountains and into valleys but we are giving you strength and god will always give you strength to be able to go through anything for him to be able to endure anything for him and to know that he is there with you to strengthen you is always a comfort even though sometimes it may not seem like there is a light at the end of the tunnel there always will be and then you will know that you are loved and that you are part of his everlasting movement and Everlasting uprising. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Wow. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Um, we have a blessing next. I think Will said he wanted to go. Will. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I ask the Aquarian Fire to flow in through and around everyone, in every way, and everywhere, and everyone. In the Hangout and watching on YouTube. Aki hawarata, ashna ataka yatata shawata tikiya, ana hawata yata hayat gaja, a shawaka yakana hata tata ya, a kanata shawata gaya kata tata shakuhuni yatiata. There are many blessings falling upon you. You need but only ask for them for them to appear. If you need healing, ask for it. If you need wisdom, ask for it. It will be given. If you need more light in your world, ask for it. The light will shine. Remember, Keep your faith, do not doubt, and rise up to know that you are one of the conquerors and not to be conquered. The ones that will succeed and not one of the ones to be trampled underfoot. We will help you to maintain your strength, your heart, and your fullness. Be of good cheer, for now is the time for you to rise up. Thank you, Will. Awesome. Very cool. Then with that said, I think we are ready to get started. So All right. Very good. Let's go for it, Jim. All righty. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, I know that Elijah is coming first. Uh, usually I don't know who's coming, but this week I do know. This will be the third time in a row that Elijah has appeared first. But he told me that he was coming. And so I know that he's the only one I know about. So <laughs> that uh, there may be many others, I'm not sure. But I know he's going to be first. So um, with that said, I'm going to go into a small meditation. 
and Elijah will be here, and then whoever after that, or I, I don't know what he has to say, so um, whoever after that will come, just keep your thoughts positive, and I, another message is that Buddha is well overdue for coming. He has his final crown lesson to be taught, but he ca had not found the right time to do it. But he promises within the next month that he will be around to do that crown teaching. So he apologizes for the delay, but he said there was many, too many things going on for him to interfere, and you, he knows that many of you understand what the chakras are already, but he just wants to go and finish his teachings. So wonderful. With, without further ado, I will um, say a meditation and bring you Elijah first. Greetings. I am going to start today with a Bible verse. Wake up. Come into being. Shine your light. Discover, transform, and illuminate. This is from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2. It is very much like the time that you are living in now and that I am coming through to speak about. This is the time to wake up and be seen and discover and transform and illuminate and let your light shine. All these things that this one simple verse says are very powerful. When it says to transform, does it mean that you are to change who you are? Or does it mean to help to transform what is? I think it means all of the above. It means to help yourself to become a greater person and transform into that person that you should be. And it also means that transformation will help to transform those things around you. As was said earlier today, you create your own world. You create your own destiny. You create your own place around you. Be aware that sometimes there will be those that want to come in, negative forces that want you to see that, or want you to see that they are in control. They control your future. They control your destiny. But it is not true. It is only a deception. So do not listen to that. Do not let that confound you. Do not let that bring you down. Do not let that be your thought process in this lifetime. Oh, I know. It is so, so easy to accept these things. Why? Because it is so much harder to fight it. Sometimes fighting the darkness and the negative feelings is so hard, or at least you believe it is, believe it is, believe it is, that it, you can hardly make it through. But let me give you something now that is for true. This verse that I gave, wake up, is the first part of that verse. It says to wake up and understand that you are a light. You are illuminated. 
you are full of God. God created this soul within you. So you are light. So therefore, do not be confounded by those things coming at you, but move yourself out to them. Shine a light into the darkness. Shine your light into the negativity. Shine. Let yourself shine and discover and transform, and that last word, illuminate. Illuminate means to bring light to everything. Illuminate it, bring it, bring the light to it. Don't just sit in the darkness, illuminate the darkness. Be the example, we speak about being examples all the time all the time and, and and many people say well i am a good example but are you an example of illumination are you an example of brightness of beauty of calm of resonation of of positive resonation that so that you are drawing things to you, they're drawing people to you, drawing those that want to share that thought to you? Are you manifesting positivity? I hope that that is the truth. I hope that is what you're doing because manifestation of positivity is where everyone's life should be. You should be moving forward manifesting the positive and the things that are to come because you are the people of light. You are the people that are to be teachers of light. You are the people that will be the growers and the showers of light. Illuminate. Now, you will find that as you are starting to shed light on different things, because you're starting to see light in different places. You see, that's one of the things that people who illuminate do. They find light in other places. They find it. And then their light is increased by the light that they find. Does that make sense to you? So whenever they find more light, they become more light. So find it. It is all around. It is everywhere. Of course, the darkness doesn't want you to see that. The darkness wants you to just think that there is no way to get out of this shell, this third dimensional thought process, this third dimensional society, this third dimensional uh, pressure. But yet, when you connect, yourself to other light, even though you may not see it right away, if you manifest that you are connecting with other lights in other places, such as God, the angels, the beauty of the ascended masters, the wisdom of the ages, that is the truth, and the truth that resonates within you, connect to all these things, and the, the light will shine in you and help you to shine outward as well. It is like the moon. The moon does not have any light of its own. But yet when you see it, it looks like a light in the sky. Why is that? It is reflecting the light that it is found in the sun. It is reflecting some of the light that is bouncing off the other planets and, and showing its light to the moon. And so the moon, although having no light of its own, and that's different from you because you do have a light of your own, is still bright in the sky because it's using other forms of light to help it shine. Do the same. If you have a friend who is very illuminated, very bright and sunshiny, and full of love and wisdom, help or go to that person and let them shine on you so that, that 
that light may be reflected into the world from you as well. Does that make sense to you? Because if you use another source of light to help your light become stronger, it is only a positive thing. You cannot do it on your own. Of course, God is a beautiful light and you can pull him in. He is, he is with you to help you shine. But remember, you don't have to do this on your own. You don't have to be by yourself in this world, in this solar system, even though sometimes you might feel that way. You don't have to be that way. You can bring in the light from others. You can bring in the light from other places to help you to shine brighter. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to let you ask questions because my little message at the front here is about how strong your light is because I can see many of you struggling and I see that you feel sorry for yourselves. And I see that because something has happened, it's, it's time to stop that that you are not weak people. You are not those that should live in that kind of, of deception that you should go around and shed that kind of negativity. But awaken. Shine your light. Come into being. The first part of this verse, it says, wake up. Come into being, shine your light. Those are the first three lines. Wake up, come into being, shine your light. Come into being. What does that mean? It means stop just sitting there like a rock. Stop just waiting for something to happen. Come into being of who you are, of what it is that excites you the most because it can happen because you are made to be special and you are made to do things and you are made to shine your light. You are made to discover, transform and illuminate. Is there any questions? We do have a question uh, first from Brian Sims, said he had one. Brian, are you able to speak up? Brian. Hello there. How are you, my friend? Greetings. I am wonderful. <laughs> um, I guess my question would be, um, this is Elijah, is this correct? Yes, I am Elijah. Yes. Um, my, my question is the transformation from the planet, from the biblical days and the recorded history of this planet. Um, yes. Was it that you went up in a whirlwind? Was it was it inter extraterrestrial involvement or just all pure angelic? There was yes. For myself, you mean? Yes. Yes. I was. I did not die on this planet. I am one of the two in the Old Testament or three. I'm not sure how many there is that did not pass away on this planet, or die, if you will. I was taken away. And yes, it says a chariot of fire. That does not mean that that was um, a chariot, necessarily. But that is the only word they had in those days to describe it. They did not have the word uh, spaceship, or they did not have the word... Um, flying vehicle because they did not have flying vehicles and they did not have spaceships so therefore they did have chariots that moved and when it was on fire this would this is how it would have ha appeared to them and yes it was an extraterrestrial sort of escape there was a war going on at that time between a couple different species. I was not involved in it. I was coming to speak to your people about how to become greater beings and how to overcome this uh, war 
between these planets by rising up and being the people that they should be because they were really not involved in it either but they needed to tell these uh, species what they felt and how they were how they were dealing with it and how the book was written the book of elijah makes it sound like god was the one raining down fire but it was not god it was alien ships and different things they were having uh, many fights and wars but i was there to take on the word of god in many senses because i even though the people looked at me as someone beyond their energy level they did not look at me as th these people because these people were they were afraid of and they and of course some might have been afraid of me as well but i was there to help them and not to hurt them but there were those that uh wanted to pray to these uh terrible beings and wanted them to be their their god and I disparaged that, I, I discouraged that, but it's all written in a very earthly way, the way that it would have been seen by a human at that time. So you have to understand, humans did not even understand what was going on, so how could they write about it properly? But let me tell you this, I have come back in this way to give you messages from God to give you thoughts of how things are different now. God has always been the same, and he is not a ruthless hater or destroyer, but a lover, a great wanting of diversity and inclusion, and a great wanter of family and community. He wants all of us to be here together and love together and be of good cheer and even though there will be those that you do have personality conflicts with that does not mean war or or fighting but it means getting to understand who you are in such a way that that is not a conquest or it does not make you feel like you're being um, pressured or forced or you do not feel like they are coming down on you. But you have to have the confidence to know that everyone is different and that there will be differences and there will be personalities that you will not get along with. But you will not have to be one that feels like you need to lash out because that is not who you were meant to be. You are meant to be one that will maybe compromise maybe speak in a loving way to defuse the situation. But you shouldn't feel threatened by anyone who is, who is in the world. You should not feel, feel threatened by their point of view. You should not feel threatened by what they have to say. You have your own opinions, of course. Hold them high. If you believe them, hold them high but you do not have to fight and you do not have to judge them because judgment is something that is what God will do on you if you do it on others. And what kind of judgment is that? God looks for the love that you are giving to others. He looks for the inclusion. He looks for the ways you are trying to make peace. The meek shall inherit the world. What does that mean? It does not mean meek as in, oh, I can't do anything, or I'm letting everybody else, but the translation is a little wrong. It's really the peacemakers that will inherit the world. The ones that are going to bring peace into the world will inherit that world because that is what we need in the world, and that is what God is. He is a peacemaker. I went off from your answer a little bit. But yes, I was taken up in a spaceship. Uh, yes, and my second part of that was a lot of the depictions that we see um, during the Renaissance um, of these beautiful paintings of these, of like um, 
of people surrounded by this radiance, this light, or this halo effect around people. Yes. Did that? Did they actually? Did the human beings at that time actually see other maybe extraterrestrial beings or actual people that were very enlightened that had this glow around them? Yes, because they were. First of all, they were not from the Earth, and so coming into the Earth from a different density, especially angels have this kind of glow because they are made of, they are very close to being light, actual light beings. And so they do seem to have a glow to them because there is light coming out of them. And if you could see those people with great love and enlightenment, if you could see the auras of them, you would see the auras as being very light and beautiful. And some people can see auras, and, and that is where they find this depiction of other than angels, of people with brightnesses around them, because their auras show their enlightenment. Ah, I see. Did that also cause maybe a rift between people that said, who are those people? Who do they think they are? Of course. They there is always, when there is any differences, there is a pre prejudice created because A, a fear of the unknown, B, I'm jealous of that particular uh, whatever it is, and three, um, you are different than me. So that is what we must overcome on this planet. And all planets is that you are really, A, not different from me, B, that you can be, you can have the things that I have, and you can have the things that they have, and they are, and everything can work out in a beautiful and loving community. You do not have to set a, a, a bar of unknown on things that you just don't understand. Get to understand it. Find out what it is, why it works the way it does, who they are. Yes. Yes. Etc. That's the last thing. I just wanted to make the last statement very quickly, my friend. Is is I do feel yes. that. I feel like it's like those in the churches or the people that practice a faith, it's like a lot of them never even thought about extraterrestrial. They never think of anything out there. So they're very connected to God and angels, but they don't see that there's yes. much more than that. It's not right. just God and angels. It, it's it's extraterrestrials. It's beings beyond we can even imagine. So it's like there are it, yes. your your people know of about at least hundred galaxies. A hundred galaxies. Are you the only people in a hundred galaxies? A hundred. I mean, there's more than that, of course. Well, more than a hundred. But your, your, your religious people will say, we are the only people in, in all of these galaxies. And if there is someone else, they're not made by God. How yes. can they say that? It's like a God separation. created yes. the hundreds and thousands of galaxies that there are. And so if there are peoples in these hundreds and thousands of galaxies, who created them but your father? Your God, he loves them. Does he want to be alone in the universe? Does he think that just one planet with these tiny little beings on them are going to be enough to keep him company for the rest of eternity? Think about that. He wants as many around him as possible. And he loves that they are free and that they will build things on their own, that they, are cre they have created minds of their own. They have cre beautiful hearts. They have beautiful thoughts. And so he wants to see how this will play out and how many will survive and how far they will go. And he gives them all free will and lets them all be a part of his wonderful universe. So it is not just one human society that is in God's watchful eye, but he does want he have he does have a great message for this society because he loves you very much and because he wants to see 
you connect with him in a greater way because you cannot do it through the churches because they only give you a small window of perception of who God is and they bring in so many other things for you to look at that you're really not looking at God, you're looking at your wallet, you're looking at uh, what is a sin and why things that you shouldn't do, whereas God is saying, don't look at the things you shouldn't do, look at the things that are there for you to do, and, and many of these things they say you shouldn't do are things that because someone couldn't do it, they made it so you couldn't do it too. That is not the way the world works. If someone is an alcoholic, does that mean you can't have a glass of wine? No. Each person deals with God in their own way. But if you are with someone that has a problem, perhaps that night you would want to some, uh, not drink of uh, the wine. But that doesn't mean that when they're not there, you cannot, you cannot share in a glass of wine with your friends. But you want to do the best thing for everyone around. And so they say, uh, don't drink at all. So it's just but a lot of Is judgment. that really right? Or they say, oh, don't play cards. <laughs> Why? Because cards uh, to say to them that you're a gambler, that you see cards were associated with gambler, gambling, and so gambling is bad, is it? They think so. But yes, if it, if it becomes a great amount of of part of your time and, and efforts, if it's a greater love than uh, trying to bring people into the light or the love of God or the love of community, I think, yes, there is a problem there. But playing cards, nothing wrong with that. Or dancing. Some people say dancing, oh, that's associated with sexual activity. What is wrong with sexual activity? Because they think that it was wrong, then it is wrong. And they think that if it's with children or young adults, that, that dancing will lead to sexual activity? Oh my, not always, no. Perhaps in their mind they have that thought, but that is not true for every mind. And you must teach your children to be moral, and if that's what you believe is moral, but there is nothing wrong with consenting adults having sexual activity if it does not hurt anyone else. It's actually healthy. But the thing is about these people is they try to put their own personal beliefs on everything. You must find out for yourself what you believe and how you feel that you should act and what is right and wrong in your soul. You should not listen to society. Society will tell you, uh, many, many things are wrong or many, many things are right, but you must discover for yourself what is the right thing to do, what is the wrong thing to do, what resonates as morality to you, and then live by it. But you cannot take everybody's ideas and all make them all yours. You cannot take all the ideas of the church and bring it into you and say, this is all right, because it's not all right. It is not who you are, unless it is. But I think 99.9% .9 of the people will find that if they are totally who they are, they are meant to be, the uniqueness that God gave them, the light that they gave them, they will not be so concerned about what they are doing wrong, but by what they are doing right. You see, you don't have to worry about what you are doing wrong if you are following what is right. Do you understand that? Yes, yes, I do. Much love, Elijah. Thank you so much, my friend. Agreed much you. love. Thank you, Brian um, and Elijah. We actually had a question following along these points, especially with the light emanating. Um, Kina wanted to ask how we are able to tell, like, let's say, you know, for people who are just starting to become aware of things, how would they be able to better sense light emanating from other people if they can't physically see it? 
You will know if someone makes you feel warm and loved and accepted. You will know if someone makes you feel like you are important, like you are part of who they are in some ways. If you come along to some people, you feel cold in their presence. You feel like they are self-serving or they are not doing, uh, are not paying much attention to who you are as an individual. These are not the people that you will be around. They're not shedding any light to you. They're not giving you anything to grow on. When you find someone that shines their light out, gives you warmth, love, and acceptance, inclusion, then you will know that that is someone that is going to help you to grow, is interested in who you are, is interested in your growth, perhaps. And when you are around people like this, you automatically grow. You automatically hear things and see the example of who they are that helps you understand who you are and what things you want to change about yourself or what things you want to change or not want to change about yourself. And you'll see their flaws, but that doesn't mean you have to correct them. And you'll see your own. Bring yourself into the beauty of the light, into the way that you see yourself in the greatest light. But you can be around others that are shedding this inclusive, beautiful, wonderful, loving light. And you can see the reflection of that in yourself. Absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Elijah. This is... Uh, very, very good for us to hear. And um, so elaborating a little bit more on the biblical times and what we understand, if you could briefly touch on, because people have been asking about maybe the real um, story behind what really happened with Adam and Eve. Briefly, somebody had mentioned that they think it, Adam may have been a hermaphrodite. Uh, it's There's a whole lot of belief systems out there so no what it is is when when you're talking about that period in human history the the creation when uh, humans were created there were many humans on earth when, at the time of Adam and Eve they were not the only creatures on earth otherwise their children could have not gone to other lands and be married do you see that but they were the first humans that gave a obedience to God in the beginning. They were the first to understand that there was a God there. And so he called them the first humans because they were the first to acknowledge him. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Even though they were not perfect, even though they did not understand anything about who God really was. They understood that he existed, and they did say they believed in God. And so he, he formulated the thought that he, they were the first creations as if they were actually the very first ones that he made. But there were many humans on the earth at that time because, as I said, they had children, and their children went off to other lands and got married. Who did they marry if there were, there were no other people on the earth? Do you understand that? So there were people, but these were the first that God looked into and knew that they understood that there was a God. And even though they didn't weren't also obedient, he gave them the the some intelligence, some able to discern things. He gave them some gifts because of, the, of who they were. When they started saying, I believe in God, he gave them gifts. They were able to name all the animals uh, according to this story. I was not there personally, but I do know that it is who God is when he realizes that his children believe in him does he not do everything for them? 
if you call on him, if you identify him, if you know who he is, this is just, Adam and Eve is an example of what God can do for humanity when they know who he is. He gave them paradise. Of course, they did not keep it. But that's another whole story. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, well, I'm really glad you also brought up marriage um, because somebody had just asked. Uh, Barbara wanted to know, she said, why and how did the concept of marriage come about? It came about from humans, not from God. God was able to see people un as a union without any ceremony. But a ceremony came about because some people loved each other so much, they wanted a ceremony of some sort. And so the church saw that as an opportunity to bring God into the marriage. There was marriages in every different kind of culture. Does that mean that Christianity or Judaism or, or any of those were the first? Not necessarily. There's been those different traditions and ceremonies that brought things, people together for many, many millennia before there even was, um, even before there was Christianity. In the Jewish realm, in the Buddhist realm, in the, in the even hedonistic realm, there was marriage and things of that nature. What marriage is to say is that they, these people are honoring one another and saying that they love one another. Now, talk to God about your beliefs about marriage. I am not here to talk about marriage, but I know that there are many misconceptions about it. Yes, and that's okay. We are moving forward. <laughs> I mean, we may anyway. talk about it sometime <laughs> in the future, but I'm not prepared to speak about it for what it really is today. Okay. Well, thank you, Elijah. Wonderful. Okay, we have a question from Sheer. Yes. Hello, Elijah. How are you? I am very well. <laughs> well, there's so many questions popping up from everything that you said. Um, of by the way, in your period, when you're speaking about extraterrestrials in battle and on Earth, you mean the false prophet that you let's say, got rid of, got rid of, of them? Of course. Um, they were trying to affect the people. They were using the earth as a place to hide, but then they brought war to the planet because they were found. And so they tried to convince the people of earth that they were the ones to fight with. So they tried to fight, to get a little bit of an army together and try to teach them how to do a battle with their enemies, but but I was there to tell them that that wasn't their battle. It was not what they were to do, and uh, to stay stay back from these false prophets. And they were that's what they appeared to be. I see. To and be. basically, this is what happening today with the Illuminati and all of that. Like they are here and against rules and regulation. And that's why it's so hard here and first content and everything else. You can say it like the second battle? Yes, there's many things. I could go into that period of time, but it would not really cause you to understand it any better than what I already said. Okay, and one more question. I've heard that there are seven collectives like El, El Yaha, Elohim. Yes. Out there. Can you maybe name another collective, maybe something that you think I have a contact, a connection to? Not at this time. I will let the, the seven collectives introduce themselves as they come into your into your area and they all seven will eventually be in this realm of of the earth realm but not yet it will take another quite a while for all seven to be here and is it because of uh, something that's supposed to arrive here that they need it's, 
I cannot tell you the future because it is not wrapped in, uh, it's, it's wrapped rather loosely in some ways at this time. So I can tell you that they will all be here, but I cannot give you the time frame or, or uh, if it's going to be before or after a certain experience or not, event, I should say. But there is events coming that will prompt some of the L species to come to you. <laughs> to me or to the Earth? To the Earth and to you. Ah, oh, awesome. And is there like something that you think I should be aware of, like a message from you? Something? Not yet. Okay. It's too soon. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. And You're when welcome. you say the Italians uh, took you up to the sky, aren't you a part of the L group? Yes. In some respects, I have been part of the L group, yes. Okay. But I am not part of the L group now, no. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Much, much, much love to you. You're welcome. There's something that I want to go into right now since he brought it up. Aliens on this earth. There, there are aliens on this earth now that were born into humanity for purposes of the ascension, for purposes of enlightening the world for purposes to make the world a greater place because it needs to be a greater place if it is going to join the galactic neighborhood if it's going to join the neighborhood of the universe which it eventually will but there are those out there and i see i think there is one here right now david are you there Is David there? We have two Davids with us. David Waller. Um, yes, he did just join. I don't, yeah, he can hear. I don't know if his mic is working, but he can hear you. I'm not sure if he can hear me or not, but he is one of these yes. humans that have been born, uh, uh, aliens that have been born into humanity. And if yeah. you will notice, there he has Palladian markings on his heads. But, um, uh, okay. and they have been put there by the Pleiadians. And, but now he is starting his mission on this planet. Would you like to tell them a little bit about that? Sure. Um, this, uh, this started on February 5th of this year. I, I won't take you to a, a step by step, but um, it was revealed to me uh, a short time ago that I was uh, from the planet Maya, from the Pleiadian planet Maya, and that I'm here for a very specific mission. And then uh, approximately changes, a few different changes began happening to me as far as uh, markings on my head, which are, I don't know if they're, I don't know if you can see them here, but uh, they've, they've definitely showed up in a few weeks ago my skin started to turn silver uh, all throughout here and just different areas. And right now when I'm in the sun, I can see different parts of my skin throughout here. And it, it almost looks like a, a form of stardust or it just looks sparkly like how some people put, uh, I guess, the, the sparkly things on their face. And then I noticed that I started to have lines that came throughout here. I think you can maybe see them right here. This was never there before. And my, the discoloration of my skin uh, began to change very rapidly. And I, I called Jim and I called Angela and I brought it up. And then suddenly over the, past of, uh, over the course of the past, I guess, about 13 or 14 days, I constantly feel almost like as if there's somebody tickling me with a feather or like there's a, a bug on my skin all over the place all the time. And it was uh, what had happened was in, in integrating uh, in integrating my other self inside of me from the planet Maya, they, I had a third strand of DNA that activated and it began to activate very strongly, I guess, approximately 27% more than what they had anticipated. So 
over the course of time, I was actually, my skin was actually turning completely Pleiadian, which was surprising to me. <clears throat> and now, and I guess they had to bring that back quite a bit. Otherwise I probably would have been taken in. I, I woke up one morning and I looked in the mirror because I noticed all these changes. In fact, you can see right through here how I have these uh, lines. I don't know if you can see them there, but uh, they, they showed up kind of out of nowhere. And I've looked at, I even, it kind of surprised me. But, uh, but when I woke up a couple weeks ago, all through here was a bright silver color, almost like chrome. And that took me back because I was like, uh oh, should I leave the should I leave the the house? And so then I got on the phone immediately and, and it went away right after that. So um I think that's when they realized what had happened. But um but anyway, this is this is uh, all very surprising to me too. I've gone uh most of my life having a I guess a, a pretty normal life and and now a lot of these revelations are being opened up to me and I'm seeing things that I was never able to see before. Well, thank you for that. I wanted you to speak for a specific reason. And that is to let you know that you are one of those that will be coming forth to spread some information. They have given you some downloads and some things that you must do. And you understand, you are starting to understand what that is. Yeah. But now, there are many things. There are more people like you in the world. But I think that you are, have started to show more of the alien look than many of the others. But there are mantis people, there are reptilians, wow. Yu Yil, and many others that have come to Earth at this time through human birth that will be taking their place in society. Are there questions out there about this? That is amazing. Yeah, David, um, we're, we were asking, is it Silver Pleiadian? Do you know the, I mean, I know it's all. Yes, it's tall blue Pleiadians, wow. but they do have a silvery tint as well. So it's, that, I have a question about the markings on the forehead. Sure. The, yes. Is the deep groove between the eyebrows, is that related to the markings or is it just off to the sides? That you're speaking you know of. that has um i gotta try to get out of the light here um here has always kind of been there i think probably because i walked around looking kind of confused most of my life and <laughs> these right here have never been there and i have what looks like um other eyebrows right above my eyebrows that came in if you can see the yeah. kind of the the markings right there mm -hmm. and then i have like a stupid looking smiley face in the middle of my forehead that just kind of showed up out of nowhere and if, if you guys can see, um, can you see the brown line? Can you see the line that just kind of goes right through here? Um, I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, sometimes it's dark and sometimes it's not. That just kind of came. That was actually the first thing that I noticed. Um, this was, uh, I'm not really sure how, how bright this comes in. You can kind of see the lines right up here. None of those, I mean, that hasn't been there my whole life. I. Part of me wants to wear a hat every place that I go, and then part of me is proud of it, so I'm not really sure. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah, definitely be proud of it, man. And we're going to start to see a lot more of this. Um, yeah, this yes. is amazing. Thank you, David, for showing us. And thank you, sure. Elijah. And let me speak. I know that you may have more questions for David. However, let me tell you about his mission a little bit just because I know it. And perhaps he knows it as well, but he has not spoken of it. But his higher self is Tesla. Tesla is coming back as his higher self. And he will be able to bring humanity information necessary for this day and age at some point. But he is, name is Tolska. On his planet of Maya, he was royalty, and he decided that it was necessary for him to come to this planet to help with the ascension. He has not yet started his mission, except for to have some downloads and for to experience some changes, but you will see more of him later. 
That is amazing. And I know a lot of people have been talking about Tesla recently. So this is just all fitting together. Very cool. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we have some more questions. Elijah, do you still have some time? I do, unless you want to talk to someone else. Well, it is quite an honor to have you here. Let's go through a few more and then um, I'm sure someone else can pop in. Um, yes. We have a question from Liz. Liz C. Lewis is asking, I'm having troubles with sustaining my vibration. Can I be assisted? It's getting really close to me because um, I can't seem to find um, back to, I can't seem to remember back to a less dangerous place. I am fifth dimensional. Can you send me healings or stabilize my vibration, please? Yes, your vibration is very high. But you said you're having trouble sustaining it. If you are fifth dimensional, your dimension, your vibration it has to be high to sustain fifth dimensional uh, acceptance. So if you are on the, this planet in third dimension and you are fifth dimensional, it may seem like you are not sustaining a fifth dimensional vibration because you are in third dimension. But let me tell you this. It is very difficult to be in third dimension and sustain a fifth dimensional vibration because you are born into this dimension. You will sustain a high vibration no matter what you do unless you denounce all goodness or whatever, but you will always be moving forward in your vibration to become a greater person. But I suggest that you um, ground yourself in a greater way so that you can feel your third dimension first and then move into your fifth dimensional being or fourth dimension or whatever it is because when you ground and then move up you are able to feel a greater connection to all these things also I see your vibration is very high, but if it's not grounded, it's, it's all over the place. So keep this grounding. I know that many fifth dimensional people, and I'm not sure if this is you, Liz, but I will, I will mention this for those who do spend a lot of time in other dimensions. Do not overdo it in those dimensions. You were born for a reason to be in the third dimension. You were not born in the third dimension to leave it. You might leave it temporarily. You might leave it, it to go visiting or to have a, a mission or whatever, but you are born into third dimension and you will return to it. So therefore, if you are trying to live in the fifth dimension and you are born into the third dimension, it will not happen. <clears throat> so therefore, balance yourself and, and remain strong in the third dimension because the information that you bring back from the fifth dimension, if that is where that you are going and with your highest vibration, is important to the third dimension. I think you just need a little clarification that you must be really stable in the third dimension so that your fifth dimension can flourish can be greater, can be more valuable to you instead of floating around in it and getting lost in it. Because I feel that sometimes that's what you do. Is that's why you feel like, oh, I don't, I can't stay, I can't stay uh, balanced. Is because you're not grounded. Please, please, please. Make sure that you are bringing this four, fifth dimensional in information back by staying grounded in the third and making it all stable. And I love you very much. And you have much information, I can tell. And it needs to be said in a way that the third dimension can understand it. If you start to talk in the fifth dimension to the third dimension, it will be lost because they'll be saying, I have no idea what you're talking about. So bring that information back in a way that it can be spoken to the third dimension in, in their own language and understandings. Because fifth dimensional wording and understandings 
are much higher and will be lost on third dimensional humans. Does that make sense? Excellent. Continue. Yes, okay. Thank you, Elijah. Awesome. Uh, we have a question next from Peter Camp. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you, Elijah. It's very nice to meet you as well. Um, I was just um, going back on what you were talking about before, and um, it's um, been, I think I've been getting lessons on becoming the best version um, that I want to become. Um, yes. So, um, so I'll just, I'll just put it in terms of, of uh, um, say, diet. So everyone, so you sort of, you have negative uh, urges, urges, you want to eat bad food, coffee, and all, all the rest of it. And I feel like, um, and I eat, I eat well for days, and then I have days where I'm naughty for a few days. And I, this is going over and over again. I'm, I'm, it's like, it's like um, I'm being taught to choose who you want to be. I'm just, I'm just, if you got any guidance. Yes. Let me tell that. you something. There are many, there are many different facets of human life. There's the food, there's the sexuality, there's the moving on into the work day. There is the, what do I do when I'm home? There's the sleep aspects. There's the learning of the fourth dimensional energies and, and uh, uh, becoming more fourth dimensional. What, at the beginnings of the journey, it's hard to pr bring all these things into perspective because there's so many things to look at. Right now, you're looking at the food portion and you're trying to resonate what is the right thing to do for me in the food portion so that I can stay healthy in the third actually, dimension. Actually, all that. Everything yes. you mentioned, <laughs> actually. Yes. Yeah. And so that is part of it and as you resonate with who you are you see it is not so much important what you eat according to the world but what you eat that makes you feel better that works for you each person is slightly different each person has their own makeup and slightly different uh chemical balances and some people are sickly and some people are very well and some people are in between but you have to decide what it is that is making you feel healthy food wise if you think that it's wrong to drink coffee then you should not drink it if you think that it's okay then that's fine it, it may not hurt you because all this is manifesting the world around you creating your existence the way that it is supposed to be according to God. God wants you to be a certain person. He wants you to be a certain way in your life. And if you're not following that, you're going to be out of balance. You're going to be out of sorts. And so if you are following this, you're learning what he wants for you. You're learning what is good for you by the way you feel. Do you understand that? Now, you say, oh, I'm going to eat more vegetables. Oh, and they're telling me that if I eat meat, that's wrong. Don't listen to any of that. Listen to your heart. Listen to your health. How do you feel when you eat this? How do I feel when I do this? How do I feel when I'm uh, this, this is happening? Learn to find the truth, and the angels will teach you about truth resonation. But truth resonates within you. And if you're praying to God that the truth will resonate within you, then it will. And it will be something that you will say, yes, that's, that's for me. But right now it sounds like you're not quite sure of some things. But that's all oh, right. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, I just... Uh, it's just like there's lots of different choices um, and I feel like to, to I, I need to become really disciplined to become the best 
version of me and it's um it's just um hard to get started i guess let me ask you a question has discipline been a problem with you that you've not been a disciplined person oh no i've yeah i've uh, or is yeah, it been... something that you that is part of who you are and you resonate with it highly i do resonate with that yes then discipline it shall be because there is something about you that will need discipline as you become who you are. Perhaps it's in your diet. Perhaps it's in the way you do things. Perhaps it's in the way you speak to others. It's in the way that you, you uh, are absolutely as a human being. And I'm telling you this. I could work with you personally and I can I could tell by all the things that you say which way you should go but I think it's more important that you decide your free will and your understanding of who you are and what is good for you and I think the discipline is a good thing for you and I think that it is something that I think that after this talk with me right now you're going to actually know some things that actually really resonate with you and move forward with that and then if if they do not really resonate with you they're just pass away they won't be important to you and that is just the, the way it is but the things that are important to you the things that resonate with you highly are the things that are going to be with you and build who you are your character your being your essence your love, your acceptance, your inclusion. You must resonate with it to be it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And let me tell you this. You do not have to be a vegetarian. You do not have to be an omnivore. It is not that, that is not what is important. What is important is how it resonates with you and what makes you feel the best. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That was so helpful. Wow. Um, Michelle, you had a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask a question kind of for the good of all. Um, and then if possible, a personal. But um, I noticed when I, I was reading through the Old Testament, let's say, a decade plus ago yes and um, it, it was very violent and not only was it very violent it was wrought with very human traits that they attributed Correct. to God exactly uh, so it occurred to me um, that perhaps that every time they use the word God that maybe they're not speaking of I don't even know who the one God is, prime creator or whatever. I don't, like maybe uh, there's there's a superstar God and then there's like lots of alien gods maybe. Yes. Let me like, explain something to you. The books of the Old Testament long ago were written by humans, of course, and they wrote it as humans would see it. They wrote it as they saw it. And through time and through history, it's been rewritten and re-evaluated. It's, it's just like you could tell someone a secret uh, about yourself at the beginning of the day. And by the end of the day, the secret has gotten out and changed in five different ways. And this is the way it was in the Old Testament. They did not have a stable way. They did not have computers. They did not really even have um, good ways of writing. Their language was still developing. Their thought processes about the meanings of words could be taken so many different ways. One word could have eight meanings, and they could all be very vastly different. And so if you use that word in a certain way, then it meant a certain thing. And if you use that word in another way, it could mean another thing. Now, those people that are interpreting these stories from these people from the past find that they can use the word that best suits their personality in some cases. 
And so they can change a whole passage meaning by changing one word's meaning. Right. But here's really so what I want to get at is that there are many different gods in lowercase, let's say, right? Yes. Because so for even just for it to be said that God, that the Hebrews or the Jewish nation, I don't know how they called it anymore, were more special than everybody else special doesn't jive with what I would consider my relationship with God. Exactly. Because of everybody is. Because when they, were, when they told the Jewish people, when Elohim and or God said to the Jewish people, you are my chosen people, he was talking about the people of the earth. Mm -hmm. He was talking about the entire population, not just one part of it. Mm -hmm. But they took it to mean just those. Mm -hmm. the, we are all Jews here, so he must mean just the Jewish people. Right. But when he said, you are my people, is it just the Jews that are his people? No. All the people of the earth are his people. So, yes, he is talking about all the people of the earth being his chosen people. And that is how prophecy is written in the galaxy and in the universe. So, at that time, was there a lot of interaction with uh, ETs? I mean, different groups having yes, different there interactions and, and calling them God. And then, Correct, and then because we later they on think it's the same God, but we're mistaken. Correct. I could, I could point out many things in your history that had alien origins. That would be great. The crown for kings had an alien origin. Many of your, uh, you know, of course, uh, Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, Punka, the Naga Lines, Easter Island, the pyramids, many, 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 many of the... Uh, and some things in the Middle East and the Eastern cultures as well um, had many things that were alien in origin. The herbal, the the excellent herbal understanding of your planet started as extraterrestrial teaching. Mm -hmm. So, and energy healing, everything. Uh, there is many things that this planet benefited by uh, aliens being here. So, and you move forward rather quickly as a civilization because of it. Mm -hmm. And many civilizations in the universe, you may not know this, take twice as long to get to where you are now than, than you might think because they do not have that alien help. They do not have that uh, star seed uh, beginnings. Mm -hmm. See, this planet was seeded, and so it makes so much sense that they would come back and teach mm -hmm. and God. So part of the reason I wanted to ask that question is because, I mean, there are lifetimes you could spend studying all of those who have been interacting with humans or one kind of variation of a human versus another through history. Yes. And... And sometimes I, I find myself having, experiencing fear, like, what if this is the wrong kind of love? <laughs> I'm not sure let if that me, makes sense. <laughs> love in its purity is, there's nothing to fear. If you are loving, if you are giving, and you are loving, and it is, you're giving to the wrong person or about loving the wrong thing or what it will be shown to you there's no next need to be afraid of that you see that's one of the problems with your people at this time is it's all oh, you have a fear-based society the fear in your society is almost crippling at this point they're the people from new york city if you were talk to them as a group of people and say do you want to go here or there they have fears because of all the terrorist groups and the different things that they have experienced in their city with terrorism and with hate crimes and with murder and all these things. And so your society is pretty uh, fear-based at this point. And that moves into all parts of your life. If you're afraid to go here because you're afraid of that, 
you're afraid to do this because you're afraid you'll catch something. You're afraid to get sick. You're afraid to be with certain people. You're afraid that uh, being in a theater might, uh, uh, might get blown up or people will come and shoot you. These are the, the kinds of things that you have to let go of. Yeah, that's not the Your kind personal of fear I experience. Are, pardon? That is not, I don't experience that kind of fear. I fear more um, things like, how do I know that this being I'm interacting with is... How do you resonate with it? Is good. Yes. So you have to learn to trust yourself. And that is part of getting away from the fear base. You mm -hmm. trust that you're doing the right thing. You trust that you are a good person. You're doing positive things and you're moving in a positive direction. Are you not doing all those things? Then if you are doing those things and you hear a message that does not resonate with you, of course you're going to say, um, maybe not. Maybe that isn't someone I should be listening to. But if you listen to it and it, sort of grasps your in, in your thought processes. Take the good and leave the bad. And, and you know what the bad is. You know exactly what is good and bad. Your heart resonator, your thought process, your God within you will let you know, oh yes, that is good. And oh no, that's definitely not good. Of course, there's some gray areas. And you know what? I let those gray areas go sometimes because they show themselves for what they are at a later date. They may come to be important because you weren't quite sure that they were right or wrong, but yet eventually they show themselves to be right or wrong. And you don't have to focus on it. You don't have to say, oh, should I be looking at this? You just sort of let that go if you're not sure. And let it come back to you if it's, it resonates with you. But you don't have to live in any kind of fear. As long as you know that what you are accepting to be true is resonating with you. Now that okay. may change. I have discovered with many humans, they accept false things as pure and truthful, but eventually it will be shown to be what it is. What is the human you have to be true to you? of yes. numb? But you have to I didn't hear that. What? What is it when we go from excited to numb? To, to numb? Yes, where nothing is exciting. Where nothing is exciting, you're going through a transitional period. And we just kind of hold on. Is that you hold on because you know that that is not going to be that way forever. Okay. Are you going to be depressed forever? No. Are you going to be numb forever? No. Are you going to be in ecstasy forever in this no. lifetime? No. Are you <laughs> going to be happy forever? Are you going to have the same friends forever? I hope so, but not necessarily. There are many. There are so many questions. You cannot just. Um, you cannot just know who, uh, what's going to happen. But you can manifest your future and you can uh, manifest the things around you because the things around you are the things that you have accepted. And even if you don't like them, even if they are things you don't like, you have kept them in your world for some reason. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could you give one example of the purest example of who God is from the Bible? that who God is he's yes. first of all a creator second of all a lover of all things and you he is in the Old Testament said that he is very jealous he's not jealous at all yeah he's one just, that accepts yeah. he's he accepts you for who you are he wants to see your light shine as bright as it possibly can. And that's what he judges you on. Not on these petty little things, sins as they're called. And of course, if your light is dull and, and dim, when you come to the Oversoul, he's going to have you review your life and, and find out why all these negative things 
have brought you into that karma for that life and you will have to process all that and that will be how he judges that he processes it with you and he brings your light out and sets it apart good enough but that who's that is who god is he is the lover of your soul he is the one that judges the light coming out of you and is that a bad judgment no 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 it's not necessarily a bad judgment it is a judgment of let's see how we can make this better beautiful much love thank you you're welcome okay thank you so much elijah we're getting uh, kind of close to our the end of our time here before um i ask if anyone else wants to come through are you able to see this drawing that Khan made of you while you were speaking? No, I have not seen it. Okay, I put it up here on the screen. We'll show Jim later, but this is amazing. Um, so thank you, Khan, for drawing that. Absolutely incredible. May I see it? Um, if you're able to see the screen, I did show it here. Can you show it on your screen? Um, uh, I just see a beautiful crystal light ball with energy emanating from it that's what it looks like to me oh yes you are in the middle of it <laughs> yes so um we will uh, show this uh, later to jim okay very good but thank you khan for drawing that it's beautiful okay um so moving forward elijah do you know if anyone else wanted to join us today I do not know, but I will ask. A lot of them have gone away. I took a lot of time. But um, there may be someone left out there that wants to speak. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Many blessings. And I hope that I was able to speak to your heart as well as your mind today and, and tell your spirit that it is alive and that fear is not necessary in this world. You can walk into it bravely and do great things with, but fear holds everything back. So be brave. Just remember, God is with you. And if you are in God's will, in God's light, in God's essence, what is there to be afraid of? What is there to be afraid of? There is nothing to fear when God is with you and is in your mission with you. Nothing to fear at all. Don't let fear cripple you or hold you back from standing up or moving forward. Just is not, not worth it because you will regret that later. Much love to you all. And be well. Keep your hearts in good places with God. Smile and be happy. Spread cheer, spread love, and spread inclusion and affirmation to those that really need it. Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. Your message lights up my heart with joy, and it's so important for us right now. We appreciate it. Ah, uh, someone asked me if I wanted to give a blessing. Yes, I will. One moment. To all God's children who are listening with open ears, who are listening with light on their mind, who are listening with joy in their hearts, be of good cheer for now is your time to shine. Now is your time to rise up and be who you are, to use the talents that God has given to you to be that unique individual that you are love yourself and in loving yourself this will give you the opportunity to love others and knowing this how can anyone hurt you with words that are not true you know who you are you know that you are giving love and that you are accepting others so take that negativity and turn it into light 
turn it into positivity and don't let it become something of a cancer within yourself but move it out and purify it because remember and it's been said many times those things that come to you that are negative are not from you they are from the outside except only things that are pure and positively you oh you are not perfect you may have flaws and you may have differences but accept them and love them and make them part of your strength and not part of your weakness much love to you many prayers and much strength to you on your road to success i love you dearly and god will be speaking his great message to you always. <laughs> One moment, please. They have called on the Sagittarius Angels. Well, I don't know if that's a category of us, but I am an angel that is in the energy of Sagittarius right now. And I will bring you light for your path. My name is... Memiel, and I am in control of some of these things that are energies being felt by your world, and you are in a blessed time. You are in a time of miracles. You are in a time where things will seem dark, and then all of a sudden will brighten, and you will see the truth. The curtains will fall away from your eyes. The thoughts of negativity will fall away because you'll see that the, the universe, although full of darkness, is more full of light, more full of the positive energies that you seek, and more full of things that can edify you in your spirit. <laughs> My love for you is most sincere, most sincere. And I want to see you all rise up with me. Take wing. You say angels have wings, but humans have the wings as well. The wings of destiny are open. Take flight. It is a small message, but it is an important one. <laughs> you are all so dear. And I know that sometimes you don't feel like much. But believe me, you are. <laughs> Have a great day, my children of God. And be well. <coughs> Thank you so much for joining us. What a nice surprise. Memiel is my name. Memiel. I've never spoken like this before. We really but appreciate I would like it. To again. I would like to again. Please do. Please. Would you have time for one question uh, related to you? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, we had a question from Wendy. Um, she Wendy. has been feeling strongly the energies. <laughs> yes, she's been feeling the energies of the Archangels. And um, Archangel uh, Ad Adnachiel, uh, maybe that might have been a typo. Yes. Adnachiel. Yes. Um, and Ragwell. 
and the Angels of Sagittarius, and she'd like to know what the their role is in bringing harmony to Earth. We are the uh, strengtheners. We bring verification. We also are with the elementals a lot, and that's why she feels our energy so much, is that we strengthen the abilities of the elementals at this particular time. And we strengthen the abilities of those that speak the languages at this particular time. And the information is much more spiritual at this time. So therefore, it is many things happening at once. But there's strong energies coming from different places around the earth and from the earth that are causing many people to wake up and feel different and feel these things. The energy of the sun is really strong right now too. I went, I'm wondering when, if Wendy is aware of that. There's some really strong energies coming from the sun at this time. Wow. Fascinating. Well, we appreciate you dropping in. Absolutely. We, um, we can all call up for, upon the angels for assistance, and it's so nice to know that you guys are around. There's someone else here that wants to speak. Do you have a question? Not a question. Pronunciation. Yes. The angel that Wendy is speaking of, and this is Raymond. Hey, guys, and happy Hanukkah to those of the Jewish faith. His name is pronounced Adnakio. He is one of my protectors and guardian angels. And he is wonderful. Of course we all yeah. are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Adnakio is wonderful. Yes. He is a very, angels, have a special place in humanity. We were created for humanity first. And perhaps that's where you get your thought that you're the only uh, beings in the universe. But we are also working with many, many other species. But we were created for you first in some ways. We were, the, we, we were created many, 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 millions of years before you even existed, but we knew you were coming. Thank you for that clarification. I was wondering how to pronounce that. <laughs> Wonderful. Excellent. And Wendy, keep close, close with your elemental friends because they are really helping you in your energies there is something about your energies that they are uplifting right now i'm not sure why or what is the reason for it but they are working with you right now and there is something ecological in your area that they are working to help i'm not sure what that is but i do hear their voices <laughs> All right, is, is there any final blessings out there? I am going to go, and I think that your time is about up. Yes, it is. You will end with some blessings. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for joining us. If you have a blessing you wish to give, we would be more than happy. Oh, uh, I will say a blessing for you in the angelic language. Oh, yeah. Because to me it means much more and has much more power. One moment. Orarasa Hayawasi Turuanona Adonai Kuria Shandi Pacham Choshivia and Ohuria Kosundi Sivia Shivia Sila Amphora Konsontin Jandirava Makwati Karia Kianosis or Shoshon Forta Fororo Mem Chefiandi Tins Koshon Tup Koshon Champion Dandum Mantia Mahora 
on Yad Adonai Kokai and Sosi and Sunday, Sisi Fanduta, Sisi Shoshon Diviatio Fiantias, Mole Lara Ran Shonshon Dura Dota Pesetsi, Kashan Dota, Motesunta, Simti TP, Mohori Vafeje Sila Gosh. Moi, moi, ah. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, hello. Hi, hi, everybody. Welcome back, Jim. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, how are you? Very good, very, very good. Hello, Jim. That was amazing. Hello, how are you? I believe you must have known about us before, am I right? I know about who? This is Andy. He is of the Draconians. Um, ah, wonderful. Yes. I love the Draconians. About, yes. Yes. We heard about your race so many times. We used to have fields before. Yes. You have given us some great wise leaders. Ish is a Draconian ascended master, and we really appreciate a lot of what he has to say as well. Absolutely. Thank you yes, for being with it. us. Appreciate it so much. Yes. You're welcome, everyone. And the Jaconians are amazing. Absolutely. Um, we are about to finish with some blessings. So um, I believe, because I know you have to get going, Jim. Um, Jim, did you want to stick around for blessings or do you have to head out? No, no, I'm, I can stay here, and Angie wants to do a blessing. Oh, wonderful. Okay, great. Um, well, Angie, if you would like to start off, that would be great to have you start and, and finish first. That's great. That's cool. Okay, go ahead. Light lingers in the universe in many, many places. God is within all these lights because he knows that your vision is necessary to move forward. See and be enveloped by the light. Know that your light also is to shine out from that. And you will all be blessed. And the time that is at hand is the most important that there is for you. Grasp it and move forward. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, we have a blessing. Uh, Michelle wanted to do one. Anna Shakota Nea, Tahe Sukota Anna He, Anna Hichota Anna Yasukota Anna Sikata Ah, Ona Shikata Naya Sikatan, O Shikatana Nai Hate Tan, O Sita Katushkota Nana Hate Katota Ona Hate, Ona He Hate to Koshukota Ah, Nana Hate to Kosota Shikata, Anna Hichukota Shikata Tatani Hita Katushkota Nana Hate to Kota Ona He Shikata Ahone. Namaste. <laughs> This is a time of much information that is coming from many places. 
is coming in many forms from many species from God and angels and rejoice with us as we pass along our information and our joy to you as well we join hands with you and join energies with you to bring you forth to bring you into the nows that will make you a greater and more acceptable species to yourself and not to anyone else we all accept you the way that you are but we know that you see your own flaws and are wanting to correct them we in turn will give you the energy to do with it what whatever you please our joy is great so join us in this joyous time that we may all overflow with the light that is within us and the light that is within yourselves god is watching but so are so many others and we just know that you will be fine and that your journey is a successful one even though it's only just beginning Jim, do you know who that was? I think that was a section of the um, Anunnaki, or not an Anunnaki, no, uh, the um, Chikani people, are talking about a particular now system that they are, I'm not sure, but it, it reminded me of Anunnaki. Okay, thank you. I keep saying Anunnaki and I meant Chikani. Yeah. But maybe it was Anunnaki. Who knows? That's what came out. Anunnaki, but I meant Chikani. I was thinking Chikani, but I keep saying Anunnaki. So I'm not sure. Maybe there is something in there. Something about that. Very interesting. Thank you, Michelle. Um, wow. Uh, Andy had a blessing? Yes. <laughs> many voices in the universe speaking and we are one of them sometimes our voices sound frightening but if you join all voices together all will sound in unison and nothing will be frightening we love you and we are a part of who you are in your history and ancestry and from your early beginnings and so we wish you only great things and we wish you only light and love let us be a part of you and be a part of what you mean to us because i know that we will eventually mean so much to you blessings and it is an honor to speak today much love amazing Thank you. Thank yes. you, Andy. Yes, and that is from the dragons, the Kiakars. Yes. The Kiakars. What you guys don't know is that that's my family speaking to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It was a beautiful message. It was. <clears throat> Thank you, Andy, and to your family. Absolutely. We we have a few more blessings left, and then we can close up for today. Um, it looks like Sarah has a blessing. Oh, Sarah! For us. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You can hear me just fine. Thank you. 
さかたからぬるんつきあんやくおしくえにおしかあんやしかにやはすかってよってことごるはらつこんないつかたからぬんこちしきことかやさかたかえいこたらおたからたきよんしかないこたらたきやしことかやさかたへいとっことごしきすこと
Iana ia kua tua ni ai ai hia hia ni ia ta uwa ka tata na ia na ta. Uwa na 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 ia ki ia na na iyo uwa na na iyo tua na ka ia tua nu tu. Uwa na ia la la ia ki ia ni ia nu ku tua na 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 ia a ia nu a tu. A ia ki ia ni ia ni ia nu tu 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 a ka ka a ia na nu a la la tata ia. Namaste. Namaste. Your Mother Earth is growing and stretching. Her energies are beautiful and divine. Let her speak to you in the next weeks and let her tell her story from here on. She is starting to become and transform into the greater world that she was always meant to be. Wow, okay. Wow. Thank you, Carolina. Okay, then I think we're almost done. I will do a quick blessing and we will wrap up for today. Excellent. Can I do one blessing before? Sure. Oh, please, oh, sure. Johannes, go please go. Please go. <laughs> Go ahead. La si si ka ha si ka na ya ka si si ya wa si si ya ra ya na su su wa ki na ya si wa hi ya na hi sa ya we ya na ya so. Nahia nahia saya noe asi Nahia soa nia iha Nahia no asi ya hoa hi Nao asi wa hiya no ahi ya si ya na hoa Ia ni ha, je an ni a wa, si an ni a wa. Namaste. Namaste. The, the vibrations and re reflections <coughs> from the universe and the galaxy be with you. We are here to give you lighter feelings, to encourage you to be of soft spirit and to be kind to one another in ways that you have not yet been and to connect and reinforce connections to be of light and reinforce the light follow us in our songs of freedom and love and glory to god and glory of life itself for it is a miracle and it is to be celebrated. Celebrate with us your life and ours. Mm. Thank you so much. That was beautiful, wow. Johannes. Nice. Wonderful. Okay. I will wrap up. Very good. Yahan ne hao sa tatao shana i yahan teo koro to han tao so o koto shonto on de ana hao so to ante a sha to koro to on dai na haya sa tao so o san tai sha ya koto mo ho to ro on ne a sa o ta anto e sha neo so to to ro on ta haya Anoro ho anta ayoso mo koro ona ya aoso to oko shata ioro onto ya ya no ho o honde anta ayo horo oni aoko. There is no containing the light that is shining off of this world. There is no containing the light that comes within the hearts of each human and each species individually and collectively we see now that it is time to gather all angels 
gather all spirits and gather all thought processes so that it can be aligned that this comes to pass. Much healing is needed for the universe. Much healing is needed for the galaxy. And much healing is needed for Earth and her people. Come with us on our journey as well, because your journey and our journey are united in one single light path, in one single light thought. We are one, we are a dream together that creates of the holographic world of the universe. Fill your hearts with the things that are of the future and of the present, and let the past go because we do not want to relive that at this time. But we want to face off in a great new dimension of the future that is brighter and many faceted for humans and aliens and spirit alike. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Okay, well, with that said, um, I have to close out with a few quick announcements. I saw that Max had wanted said earlier, and I didn't see it until later. So, Max wants us to um, just be aware. We have a Hucolo group on Facebook. Please check out our Facebook group. You can search for Human Colony or Hucolo. We have a group and a page. So, uh, whatever you prefer. Also, um, tomorrow Max is doing a channeling at noon. Um, that's noon Eastern Standard Time and the link will be posted on the humancolony.org slash jump page. That is our um, permanent page we have where we post all the links with the YouTube and the participation links. Also, we invite donations for our lovely, lovely Jim Charles. He recently got a new monitor uh, TV for this and that's what he's using and um, it helps him be able to see better so that was about $300 so we definitely invite donations for that please send the donations to uh, it's, max at humancolony.org it's not quite set up yet we're working on that we worked on it this morning and I worked on it the other day but it, we're not we're not quite in full use of it yet but it Oh. It, it will be a beautiful blessing in the future here. Yes, I'm so happy you have that, Jim. Jim's eyesight is not the best, but we are sending healing yes. for you, Jim. And um, so we invite donations to help out Jim. PayPal address is max at humancolony.org. Lastly, we invite for moderators to help do basically what I do, get all the technical stuff set up and moderate. Um, and like I said, we invite um, transcriptionists who would like to help us transcribe videos. You can send those our way. So with that said, I believe that's all for today. We will wrap up. Thank you everybody for joining. This was super magical as always. And thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank no you. problem. Thank you all for uh, participating it's part of your energy that's involved in this so it's beautiful absolutely so. this is a co-creation and it's valid for everyone yes. watching later on on YouTube or wherever absolutely absolutely so please share tell your family and friends it's time for us to all come out of our shells if we feel that it's the right time for us to do so but um, amazing things are happening that's <clears throat> that yes absolutely magic and amazement so don't lose sight of that we will end yeah. for today and so much love to everyone thank you much love talk to you later bye-bye